Chapter 3. The Letters from No One The escape of the Brazilian boa constrictor earned Harry his longest ever punishment. By the time he was allowed out of his cupboard again, Happy Tuesday, Potterheads! It's time to talk about chapters 3 and 4 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and today we're going to look at J.K. Rowling's use of color in the chapters. Title card! Okay, quick side note. Last week when I posted my video, I decided that I was going to put it on Twitter and, you know, tag three of my favorite Harry Potter YouTubers in it and see what would happen. I didn't think it was going to happen. Anyway, you guys, I'm still freaking out about this. So in it, I tagged three of my absolute favorite Harry Potter YouTubers, Tessa Netting, Brizzy Voices, and John Carlin of Super Carlin Brothers. And you guys, Tessa Netting responded to me. Like, you have no idea. I fanboyed so hard when that happened. Not even kidding, I made this face for like five minutes. I still can't believe it. I freaking love Tessa's videos. Like, she is part of the reason that I'm making Harry Potter YouTube videos right now. And look, Tessa, I like, I like musical theater too. We should be best friends. I just, I, 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 I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. It was amazing. Anyway, guys, back to business. Here's this week's recap of the chapters. School's over and it's summertime, and we find out that next school year, Harry and Dudley are going to be going to different schools. One day, Petunia is dyeing Harry's new school uniforms out of Dudley's old gray clothes, and Uncle Vernon tells Harry to go get the mail. So Harry goes and grabs the mail, and there's a couple things for other people, but then on top, there's a letter for Harry, and it says, Mr. H. Potter, the cupboard under the stairs, 4 Privet Drive, Little Winging, Surrey. The envelope is thick and heavy and yellow, and the ink is emerald green. And on the back, there's a purple wax seal with a coat of arms with a lion eagle eagle, badger, and a snake surrounding a large letter H. So Harry brings the letter back, and Dudley says, Hey, Dad, Harry's got something. And Vernon snatches it out of his hands, and he gets so scared, he says, Petunia, look! So the Dursleys start freaking out, and Harry's like, It's mine! I want my letter! And he tries to snatch it from them. And Vernon yells for Dudley and Harry to get out of the kitchen. Vernon and Petunia are so paranoid that they're being watched. So when Vernon comes home from work, Harry is asking about his letter, and Vernon says, Shut up! Stop talking about the letter! We're giving you a bedroom! And the next morning, another letter comes in the mail for Harry. At this time, it says, Mr. H. Potter, the smallest bedroom, number four, Privet Drive. And then one day, it's Sunday, and Vernon thinks, Fine day, Sunday. Why is that, Dudley? No post on Sundays. All of a sudden, all these letters start coming down the chimney, and Vernon says, Out! That's it! We're leaving! So everyone packs up stuff, and they just start driving around, and they stop at the ocean, and Vernon gets back in the car, and he says, Come on, we're jumping in this boat, we're going out to that shack that's on the rock. So they go out to the shack, and Harry's falling asleep, and it's almost his birthday, and then all of a sudden he hears a loud noise at the door. So then at the start of chapter four, the door smashes open and there's this enormous giant man that makes his way into the hut. Yay, Hagrid! So anyway, Hagrid's going on for a while saying, oh hi Harry, haven't seen you since you were a baby. And Uncle Vernon's like, get the heck out of here. So then Hagrid keeps talking to Harry and he slowly realizes that Harry knows nothing about who he is. And Hagrid gets so mad at the Dursleys for not telling him anything. So then Hagrid takes out a letter just like the ones that have been coming to the Dursleys house. And in it, it says that Harry's expected at school on September 1st. So then Uncle Vernon's like, you better not tell him. And Hagrid's like, I'm going to. And then Uncle Vernon yells, stop, I forbid you. And then Hagrid says, you're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? So then Hagrid tells Harry all about how his parents actually died and who Voldemort is. And then, you know, some magic happens and he gives Dudley a pigtail. No big deal. And Harry's like, no way, man. I can't be a wizard. And Hagrid's like, come on, stop being so humble. And so Hagrid says, let's get going. We've got to buy all your stuff. Let's get out of here. So I like how this chapter starts off because we finally get to see Harry having some hope. Uh, and it's because he's going to be starting at a new school next year, free of Dudley. He finally sees some change coming down the road. But of course the Dursleys are quickly trying to stomp that out of him. As soon as we know that Harry's going to a different school, we see Petunia dyeing these old gray clothes of Dudley's. And it's really smelly and stinky. And it's just like crushing all the hope that Harry has that this new school is going to be better. But all of a sudden, we get a hint that something better than that coming along. On the same exact page, Harry gets his first ever piece of mail, and the narration pays very close attention to the colors that are on it. We talk about thick, heavy yellow parchment, green ink, and on the back, purple wax seal. Already we see that these seeds are being laid to hint at something bigger. Indeed, nearly every time that JK mentions this letter, she's very particular to mention the colors. It's always the yellow parchment, the green ink, the purple seal. It's never just the envelope. It's never just the ink. And as we know, these letters don't stop coming. Interestingly, I think we see the Dursleys trying a bit of spoiling Harry like they do with Dudley, maybe to appease the Wizarding World since they fear that they're being watched. So if they can make the Wizarding World think that they're being kind to him, like, do they think that the Wizarding World will stop pursuing Harry? In contrast to the particularity of the mentioning of the colors, the Muggle World is so gray. Harry's new school clothes are gray. The hotel that they go to is 
gloomy and dark. The sea is described as iron gray. Even the food that they eat while they're on Uncle Vernon's wild ride is bland. They eat stale cornflakes and tin tomatoes on toast. <laughs> bland, flavorless, blah. So from just the indication of the letters that Harry's receiving in contrast to the Muggle world, we can tell that the Muggle world is not where Harry belongs. And I think throughout these chapters we see a huge tug of war for Harry's future between the colorless Muggle world and the colorful magical world. And as the chapters go along, Vernon is so persistent going down his war path that the muggle world only continues to get darker and darker. We start with just Harry's school uniform that's gray, but then Vernon has boarded up the house so it's dark inside. And then they go to this gloomy hotel where everything is dull and gray, and then all of a sudden we get to the sea, and the sea is dark and iron gray, and then we're on the shack, and it's cold and wet, and just everything is heartless and uniform. Now this, to me, is why it's so perfect that Hagrid is the one to save him from the Muggles, let alone because Hagrid was the one that delivered him to the Muggles in the first place. But it's Hagrid's name that makes it all the more interesting that he's the one that rescues Harry. See, Rubius quite literally means red, and so Hagrid is this enormous burst of color that breaks down the door and busts open the wizarding world to Harry permanently. This dull gray world has been infiltrated by color in a massive way. And after this, Colors just begin to explode all over the place. Hagrid is able to produce a, a warm, bright fire. He gives Harry a cake with green icing on it. Hagrid's umbrella is bright pink versus the cold gray metal of Vernon's gun. Harry more vividly sees the green flash in his memory. And the first spell that we actually see cast by a character is brilliant purple. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background, but that's my cat, Evie, short for Minerva, playing with a mouse. Toy mouse. And the Muggle stuff keeps losing more color. It even says at one point that Vernon's turned ashen-faced. But the fight for Harry isn't done yet. So as Petunia talks about her sister and the story of basically how Harry got there, it says that Harry loses all of the color from his face. I think this is interesting because I think it shows that Harry doesn't really believe that he's still a wizard yet. I think at this point, Harry thinks that it's possible that he could wake up from this dream. Thankfully, Hagrid is the kind, gentle voice through which Harry, and we first hear the story of Voldemort. I think it's really important that this is Hagrid. Hagrid's innocence is able to ease Harry and us into the Wizarding World. Anyone else may have made the story sound way scarier and may have made the Wizarding World itself sound way scarier and Harry may never have ended up going. And so this is why The Keeper of the Keys is one of my favorite chapters in the entire series. It's like this big warm hug after you've been standing out in the cold rain for hours. It gives me so much hope that even when things seem like they're at their worst, Hagrid's gonna come busting down your door and save your day. So as we all know, colors are going to be hugely important later on in the books once Harry gets to Hogwarts. I mean, your Hogwarts house colors basically signify to the entire world who you are as a person. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't be friends. You're wearing Slytherin colors. So JK, laying the foundation here is almost definitely to prepare us for the vivid world that we're about to enter into. So those are my thoughts on how JK Rowling uses color in these two chapters. Let me know in the comments where you see any other places that she uses color and what you you think it might mean and let me know if you disagree with me if you have a different interpretation and so now it's time for parenting with my biggest takeaway from the chapters is about vernon's persistence to reject harry's wizardry vernon has such a clear idea in his head about what harry's future ought to be he's so insistent upon this that when the world disagrees with him to quote dudley daddy's gone mad hasn't he i guess what i want margot to know is that even though i will have hopes and dreams for her she is the author of her future vernon's great need for control that we saw in the first two chapters rears its ugly head again but this time he is so persistent in his desperate need to reject magic and destroy any magic around him that he puts his family in danger and he loses his freaking mind. I want Margot to understand that she has the freedom to choose what her future will be. And those are my thoughts on parenting with <laughs> This is seriously one of my favorite chapters in the entire series. Not just because it's our f sort of introduction into the wizarding world. I just think the way that JK Rowling writes the suspense in these chapters is so riveting. Like she builds up to so many huge reveals in such a really great way. She'll build up for like two or three pages at a time. Just back and forth dialogue, people arguing until you build to a breaking point. It's absolutely amazing. I could have talked about that in these chapters. I could have talked about persistence. Uh, these, this chapter is just so full of so many things. All right, guys, so here's your assignment for next week. We're gonna switch things up just a little bit. We're just gonna read one chapter this time. We're gonna read chapter five, Diagon Alley. I am so 
excited to finally see a place in the Wizarding World and get to talk about it with you guys. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you read that chapter by next Tuesday. And please don't forget that on Thursdays I post fitness videos talking about my journey to try to lose weight and take better care of my body. Please hit that thumbs up if you like the video. If you really like what we're doing and want to follow along, please subscribe. Share the video with your friends on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere that you have friends. My big push right now is I really want to be able to make a custom URL instead of the ugly one that YouTube has assigned me. We gotta get to 100 subscribers before I'm even eligible. Everyone, please share with your friends. Get people on board. Thank you so much for being an early fan. We need to share this with more people. So in conclusion, no post on Sundays. Mugwum, Harry, you're a wizard. Tessa Netting, let's be best friends. And until next Tuesday, happy reading. Knox. Cat. Stop it.